From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Sportsline. Hey there, Sportsline on your television. Steve Lambert with you. Glad you are here with us tonight on News Channel 5 Plus. Lots to get to. Obviously, Titans talk from a game on Saturday night against the Bucks. Titans win 13-3. Malik Willis gets the second straight start at quarterback, throws for a touchdown, only throws for 80 yards, completes just 7 of 17 passes, but had the flashes of brilliance that I think have people so excited. Also had some of the indecision, slow decisions perhaps at times that have people a little bit worried about how quickly he's picking this up and ultimately where he fits in as the backup right now. I don't think Logan Woodside looked very good in the second half action he got. He threw an interception, so that's now three turnovers in two games, which certainly isn't helping his cause. The problem right now is, I think when you look at the Titans' quarterback position, it's, it's very clearly Ryan Tannehill, and if he gets hurt, they're in trouble. They drafted Malik Willis to be a different guy, whether that be as a backup or potentially a starter down the road, and all of that potential is there, but for the here and now, the Titans are big-time trouble if they have to go to Malik Willis or to Logan Woodside. Ryan Tannehill is the key and the hope to this offense this year. He's got to play well, and he's got to stay healthy. That is absolutely first and foremost. But you did see Willis. You did see some of the flashes, and you see a guy that needs to take advantage of this week with another joint practice against the Cardinals coming up on Wednesday. Mike Vrabel said today that they're not going to do Thursday, just Wednesday as a joint practice, and then the Titans will go back at it just against themselves on Thursday before a Saturday night preseason finale against the Cardinals at Nissan Stadium. All of that is time that Malik Willis has to take full advantage of the practice time, of the reps he gets, of the reps he gets in the game on Saturday night against the Cardinals. All of that is very important for him and his growth and his potential within this offense. Running backs, obviously we haven't seen Derrick Henry yet in any substantial action other than a few drills of practice. But I think you like what you see from guys running the football there. Julius Chestnut has flashed. Hassan Haskins has flashed at times. Dontrell Hilliard has really emerged as a guy that on third down that they can trust and go to, whether that be as a pass blocker or a pass catcher. And obviously we saw him step in and run the ball effectively at times last year when Derrick Henry was out injured. You've got a battle going on at wide receiver. And I think you've got a battle going on cornerback, number two cornerback, Roger McCreary and Caleb Farley, really the only position on the defense that isn't just a clear-cut guy on the field to start right now, who, who's it going to be? Is it Farley, as people projected? Does, has he shown enough consistency at this point? Or is it Roger McCreary, who has been exceptional for a rookie in camp? And then everybody wants to know about right tackle, and maybe, just maybe, a lean today on that. The Titans certainly aren't going to tell you this, but Nicholas Petit Frere, who got the start at right tackle on Saturday night, got increased reps with the first team again today, and Dylan Radins took some snaps at guard. Obviously, he did that some last year when he was in the swing offensive lineman position. Are they putting him back in that role? Is that something? Is that a tip of the hat? I, I don't know. They certainly aren't going to admit that at this point. And I imagine both guys will see reps at tackle on Wednesday against the Cardinals. They'll probably both see reps over there on Saturday night in the preseason finale. But if you asked me right now, based off of what we've seen in training camp, what we've seen in the preseason games, I think Nicholas petit Frere has been the more solid of the two. And he's also a rookie. This time last year, he was at Ohio State. He comes in, and I feel like the growth curve for him is kind of on that solid upward trajectory. When you look at Raiden's second-round draft pick last year, it was disappointing where he was in training camp a year ago. Unlike Petit Frere, he was not in the mix based off of what he did in the preseason. 
He wasn't really in the mix during the regular season. The only time he was on the field, essentially, he was forced into action by injuries, as so many guys on the Titans were last year. But it wasn't necessarily because he earned it. And then in the offseason, everybody talked about the good offseason program he had, and everybody sort of assumed that Dylan Radins would be the leader in the clubhouse for this job. But I don't think in training camp you've seen a guy that looks like the starting right tackle. I don't think you've seen that in the games. I think he struggled at times the other night. Maybe got better as the game went along. But to me right now, the more solid choice is Petit Frere and perhaps a lean in that direction. It, you know, I feel like if it was a political race and you have the pundits out there, that say an election is going to be a lean this way or a lean to the other candidate. I feel like if you would have handicapped this race for right tackle going into training camp, you would have said that it was a lean Dylan Radin's position. That there would be competition, but Dylan Radin's would be the guy that essentially would have to lose the race. I think if you talk about it right now going into this week, now, less than 21 days, 20 days to be exact, from the regular season opener against the Giants, I think the position is a lean, petite frere. He looks to be the guy in control right now. So those are the positions everybody wanted to know about. A little more information there. Other huge story today, obviously, Little League World Series up there in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Nolansville does it again. A 5-2 extra innings win over Hagerstown, Indiana, the Great Lakes region representative. So Nolansville now 3-0 into the U.S. winner's bracket game on Wednesday. Hawaii's leading Texas right now, two to nothing. Hawaii has been absolutely dominant to this point in Williamsport, outscoring their opponents 25 to one. If they win tonight, or if Texas would come back to win, the winner of that game will face Nolansville in the winner's bracket final. You win that game, you're in the U.S. final on Saturday. You lose, you have to play again Thursday and win to get into that U.S. final. So very likely these teams might see each other a couple times over the remainder of the week. But think about this, Nolansville, for all the success that that league has had, and they've now been to the Little League World Series four times in the past decade, the same Little League producing that much talent to get to a global stage and the Little League World Series four different times in one decade. In 2020, there was no Little League World Series. <laughs> So it shows you how good the Little League is down there. But in the four trips, the three previous trips have resulted in only three wins. They went one and two the first time, two and two the second time, 0 oh and two in the trip last year. They're now three for three this year. So they've matched the total of wins in just three games this year at the Little League World Series and now into what will be at least the final three from the U.S. side, maybe the runner-up, maybe the champion. Who knows? Maybe they could win the whole thing on Sunday. Absolutely remarkable run, and today was a remarkable game. They faced a flamethrower from Indiana. They fought off the pitch count. They, they built it up, got to him with a run on a wild pitch in the fourth inning to tie the game, got him out of the game in the fifth inning when he topped the 85 pitch count, then took the lead on a Bo Daniel double down the left field line in the fifth inning to go up two to one. Looked like they might be able to close it out. Couldn't add any insurance runs in the sixth. Then bases loaded, nobody out in the bottom of the six, clinging to that two to one lead. Indiana ties it with a base hit. Still bases loaded, nobody out. Jack Rhodes gets back-to-back -back strikeouts. And then William Satinoff, which, let me tell you, if you have not watched this kid play, he's a terrific leadoff hitter, and he's an even better fielding shortstop. Just absolutely exceptional out there. He makes a diving catch on a little looping liner out between shortstop and third base. If that ball drops, the game is over. 
and Indiana wins. Satinoff makes a diving catch to save the game and send it to extras. And then in the seventh inning, Jack Rhodes gets his eighth hit in Williamsport. Drives in the go-ahead run. They score three more, or two more, three total in the inning. And then they win it 5-2 to two to advance to that U.S. winner's bracket final on Wednesday night. Yesterday afternoon, as they were getting set for this one, I had the chance to talk to Randy Huth, who is the manager of this team and the team that made it last year from Nolensville to the Little League World Series. And he talked about some of the exploits of what this has been like it's been a very different experience this year COVID is somewhat in the rearview mirror at least from an athletic standpoint and how events are being run and so it's a totally different experience for the kids to be there for the fans there were no fans last year and who stepped up for this team and why it means so much for them to be back and have the opportunity to do something that no Nolensville team, as good as they've been, have done before. Here is my conversation with Randy Huth. Well, Randy, you guys have an off day today. You're getting set for that big matchup tomorrow afternoon. I'm sorry. Who do you play tomorrow afternoon? I should have known that. Uh, Great Lakes, which is the team from Indiana. From Indiana. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, here we go. Three, two. Well, Randy, you guys have an off day today, getting set for that huge matchup against the Great Lakes, the team from Indiana, tomorrow afternoon. How you guys biding your time getting set for that matchup? Well, today we, we got uh, the special privilege of watching the other games with the Orioles players. So the, the MLB Classic is tonight, which is the game that the Little League hosts every year during the World Series where two MLB teams come. And this year it's the Red Sox versus the Orioles. So uh, we got to, when the players arrived, we got to greet them when they got off the bus. And then the Orioles sat with us to watch a little bit of the game that was going on, the Lily game was going on until it started to rain. And now it's currently under rain delay. So we're waiting to go to that game tonight. Pretty special privileges for your kids. What has their experience been like being around the big leaguers and being around the other star little leaguers from around the world there? Well, you know, this is our second year in a row to make it. So I have two returning players. So it's a very different atmosphere this year than last year because last year there were no international teams and there were no fans. So this year there's fans, which is crazy. Our first game, there were 20,000 fans there to cheer. Uh, and then there's also international teams. So in our dormitories, uh, in, there's four teams in our particular building, and it's Mexico, Curacao, Iowa, and us. So we have two teams that don't speak English very, very well. So our, our boys are getting to communicate with these teams uh, from other countries, which they would never get to do in a normal day. Um, so that is super exciting and fun for those boys. But they're treated like rock stars here, you know. It's just a really cool event, and I think it's the, the the biggest event in youth sports. Yeah, for sure. We've been following it all the way back, really, to the state tournament with your team and the run you've been on. Already played two games up there. What's really stood out about the way your team has performed in Williamsport? Well, our defense. Look, right now, we're currently the only team that does not have an error. We haven't committed an error yet, so uh, we're playing really good defense. And when you play good defense, and your pitchers have confidence to throw strikes because they do. They know that if somebody hits it, they're going to make a play. So our defense has really carried us. We're, play, we're playing really good on the offensive side, but uh, we're a defensive kind of oriented team. And that's really what stood out to me. But I, I, last year going 0-2 here and losing two tight games, a 1-0 to nothing and a 2-1 to one game, or a 4-2 uh, to game, 4-1 to one game. It's a 1-0 to nothing and another close game, you know, it was pretty disheartening. So to get off on a 2-0 and o run this time uh, is huge for us. You know, it's everything. It helps us keep our pitchers. Um, without throwing a ton of pitches. So where our pitching is set up really good when you get a couple days off. Um, so we're feeling great. You mentioned the hitting. Uh, Jack Rhodes has seven hits through two ball games. That could be an entire tournament for some guys out there. You've got Drew Chadwick and uh, some other guys who popped in with several big hits, RBIs in the game on Friday afternoon. How has the offense come along for you? Man, the offense has been great. It's led by our veterans. Uh, William Satinoff, who bats lead off. We call him Sadie. Uh, so Sadie, he plays shortstop and bats lead off in the Jack Rhodes. Those are the two guys that returned from last year's team. And they, they bat one and two in our lineup. And Jack has seven hits right now. If, if he would have got one more at bat the last game, he was four for four. And if he went five for five, he, he would have tied the record for the most hits in a game ever in the 75-year history of the Little League. So um, that would have been cool. 
But those guys have stepped up doing exactly what we thought they would do. And, and when they hit well, it's contagious. And those kids get excited. And the most fun thing is baseball is hitting. So when they get excited about something, hey, it just starts to roll. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. How do you stack up for tomorrow's game against the Great Lakes? I think we stack up well. I mean, they have a lot of left-handers. They have a, they have a left-handed first baseman, a left-handed second baseman, a left-handed third baseman, a left-handed right fielder, and a left-handed center fielder. So they have a ton of lefties in their lineup. Um, so that's going to be something that might be a little bit of a challenge to you because you just don't see it very often. Um, but that, that also helps us on the offensive side because having a left-handed third baseman is kind of a disadvantage. Um, but, you know, I think we matched up really well. They have one really tough pitcher. His last name's Hall. He's good. We saw him pitch the first day, and he throws in the mid-70s, so he's, he's bringing the heat. Um, so we need to get to him early. If we don't get to him, it's going to be a long day. Um, but, but I'm excited about it. I think that we can get to him and, and get his pitch count up high, and once we get him out of the game, you never know what can happen. You mentioned it last year, the disappointment of going 0-2 there. How much motivation is there with this group to outdo last year's team or for the two kids who were there to do better than what they did a year ago? Yeah, we've already done better than what they did. And the funny thing is, is Jack Rhodes has more offense right now by himself than our entire team had the entire time they were here last year. So uh, we had something to prove. Our whole motto has been we didn't come this far to only come this far. You know, that we didn't want to just get here to get here this year. Last year, that's what we did, and we were excited about that, and it was great, and that team was has every reason to be so proud of their effort just to get to this point. But this year, we knew what to expect. Uh, we were excited to be back to give, you know, a better effort than we did last year. Um, so, and I think we've done that so far, and we don't continue to – we don't plan to stop anytime soon. So hopefully we can uh, win one more game and make it into the winner's bracket final. <laughs> Yeah, and obviously there's a great history with this Little League. This is actually the fourth trip in 10 years from the same Little League to Williamsport. I don't know if anybody's done something like that over the span of a decade. What is it about the water down there in Nolensville or what you guys are doing at the at the park? How's that happened? Uh, you know, we're just really lucky and blessed to have a great community, and, and a lot of kids want to play Little League baseball. We're, that's not everywhere in the country. A lot of places in the country, Little League is not the major youth baseball um, a sport so association so uh, little league is huge in our in our city in our community uh, simply because I think they know the history and they've seen it on TV you know and every kid dreams of being a at the little league world series one day and that's usually just a dream that's very 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 tough to make but when they see us on TV they think that, you know they know that it is a reality that they can so they want to play little league so they want to sign up and that makes more people want to play the more the better your team is going to be so you know it's it's amazing that we made it in 2013 and 2014 those teams were coached by chris mercado who's my best friend um which is great and then you know last year and this year chris coached with me last year he's not with us this year but uh, you know the last two years was uh me as the head coach so uh we have a great history but we had never won the first game ever so those three years we lost the first game this year we won the first game so we're breaking history already uh, and to win two games in the winner's bracket, uh, we've never gone that far. So uh, pretty excited about it. Well, now you're two wins away from being in the U.S. championship and playing next right. weekend out there at Williamsport. Obviously, that's the dream. What would it mean to continue on making history in the way you have? Man, it would just be so great to be able to um, give those people that back home that have supported us so much with their money, their time, and their cheering uh, to be able to give them something really special like a U.S. championship or even a World Series championship. You know, I think everybody's going to be proud of us no matter what we do. I'm definitely proud of these boys, whether we played another game or not. However, if you winning it would be something totally special that, that very, very, very few people have ever been able to accomplish. The only team from Tennessee to ever win the U.S. championship was the 2012 Gullitsville team. So I'd love to be in that category with them. Those are a bunch of great players, a really good team. I know some of those families. So I'd like to be right there with them, you know, and I know our kids would too. Well, there's a lot of people back here in Tennessee rooting for you, Randy. Congratulations on the great start and keep it going. Thank you so much. I hope to talk to you again in a week or two and be able to hold up a trophy. Yeah, we'd love that. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. And they're one win closer to doing just that. The 5-2 to two extra inning win over Indiana today into the U.S. winner's bracket. Final.
Wednesday afternoon, 2 o'clock, winner of Hawaii and Texas, who are doing battle right now tonight in Williamsport. Win that one, you're into the U.S. final Saturday afternoon. You lose, you fall into the loser's bracket, and you have to play Thursday to get to that U.S. final. But absolutely, the boys from Nolansville in a very very good position right now and it has been fun to watch we'll take a break we'll come back we'll dive into some titans talk right after this this is sports on news channel 5 plus